You may be wondering why I'm sending this email to you today if you're not a landlord, but given the Colorado legislature's current barrage of laws that are punitive towards landlords and their property rights, it does make me wonder where they're headed next and how that might impact the millions of homeowners in our great state. So even if you're not currently a landlord, but you do own your home, fair property rights for all types of property owners should be of interest to you. And if you're a tenant who hopes to one day own a home here in Colorado, then protecting your future rights as an owner should also be of interest. Balancing owner's property rights with ensuring safe, fair, and quality housing for tenants should not be this difficult. So I have two videos below and I prepared my overall rental market update for you before I was made aware of the passage of House Bill 1098, which is honestly a complete affront to individual property rights and landlord rights here in Colorado. So I recorded the second video to update you on this legislation. So please take the time to watch both videos, then call, email, or text me to discuss your questions and concerns further. I am here to talk, so thank you as always for watching, and I look forward to working with you to protect property rights here in Colorado. In a complete affront to individual property rights, the Colorado Legislature, along with Governor Jared Polis, are taking up House Bill 1098 this session and seemed poised to pass it. Now, as a property owner and landlord myself, I have grave concerns with this bill. And as a real estate professional and 29 year Denver resident, I feel it's my responsibility to make my clients and the general public aware of what our elected officials are up to. Now, obviously I'm a huge advocate of safe, clean and accessible housing and of being a good and responsible landlord. I have been extremely grateful in my years as a landlord to have exceptional tenants who have been a joy to get to know. I am a centrist, I am not an alarmist. However, I also believe there are certain lines that the government should not cross in telling me and you what we can do and cannot do with our property. Now, as reported by the Denver Post just today, House Bill 1098 generally would give renters of apartments and other housing a right of first refusal to renew an expiring lease. Landlords would need to have good reason for not allowing them to renew, such as failure to pay rent or plans for substantial renovations. Now, this bill won approval from the House last month and passed its first hurdle before the full Senate on Monday afternoon, which was just yesterday. It could be voted on as early as today in the Senate, then would need agreement from its legislative backers in both chambers for any changes made before heading to the desk of Governor Polis. This is bad. This is really bad for property and landlord rights here in Colorado. So basically, if I have a tenant who pays the rent but tends to be late every month or forgets to pay their utility bills on a regular basis, or that isn't respectful of my property and is causing damage that's even just slightly or maybe significantly over the threshold of normal wear and tear. Or they're just a difficult tenant who makes unreasonable demands on me as a landlord at all hours. I am going to be forced as that landlord to renew their lease once it's expired if the tenant wants to stay. This bill is offensive to property rights, stated Senator Paul Lundeen, and I completely agree. This will empower tenants to occupy landlord's property, my property and your property, without our agreement, and will make it very difficult to remove problematic tenants. Now, as Senator Kyle Mullica has stated, I do have concerns that we are creating a situation where one party on a contract is going to be forced to stay in that contract in perpetuity. Yes, Senator, I agree. Do any of the politicians seeking the passage of this bill understand the nature of a contract? That the terms of contracts are legally binding on both parties, including the start and end dates. Now, what other provisions of our leases would you like to make null and void and not legally binding in your very misguided attempts to solve the housing crisis? Let's solve the housing crisis by actually building some affordable housing, not trampling all over the rights of those who have already made the sacrifices necessary to own, care for, and maintain Colorado's existing housing supply. Now, as a realtor, 
It has been my joy to work with clients from all walks of life over the years and to assist many of them in building generational wealth through real estate, which can include holding rental properties in their portfolios. As with so much of our wayward legislation, a bill of this nature will hurt the mom and pop property owners. Those folks like you and like me who have worked hard and saved and cared for our homes over years and decades. This bill has the power and potential to bind you to problematic and destructive tenants in perpetuity. Let that sink in. Now here's another quote from the bill. If a landlord proceeds with the eviction of a tenant without cause, and again, are we really going to allow politicians to decide just cause for us instead of allowing us to use our leases as written, the tenant may seek relief as provided in existing laws concerning unlawful removal of a tenant and may assert the landlord's violation as an affirmative defense to an eviction proceeding. Now, I encourage you to read this bill for yourself, linked below, and pursue your own research of its ramifications. Now, a silver lining to this is that this inane bill hasn't passed yet, so you and I still have time to call and write our governor and representatives and help them see the truth about House Bill 1098. I'm including contact information for Governor Polis, the four primary sponsors of this bill, and where to find contact information for your specific representative. If you agree with me, please join me in voicing your concerns today. And if you want to call me to discuss this further, please do so. I'm always happy to talk through your concerns and your questions, even if they differ from mine. So thank you as always for watching, and I look forward to working with you to protect property rights right here in Colorado. Did you know that Denver landlords must now provide written notice of the tenant's rights and resources document, both at the time of executing a required written lease and any time the owner or the operator makes a rent demand? So this includes when a tenant signs a new lease or renews an existing lease. Hello, fellow Colorado landlords. It's Amy Berglund, real estate professional and landlord with Mile High Modern, here with your March 2024 landlord update. Now, there are many new changes to landlord tenant laws here in Colorado, and it seems like new legislation is coming every day very fast and furious. So please make sure that you do have good legal counsel to stay up to date. And if you need any resources for this, please do let me know. Now, as to the rental market, in February, median rent stayed fairly consistent while listings on the market increased for both single and multifamily rentals. So the single family rents were pretty unchanged from January, holding at about $2,700 a month, and available listings were up slightly about 1.7% from January to February. And multifamily rentals decreased slightly to $1,495 in February versus $1,515 in January. One-bed rentals seem to be falling just a little bit out of favor, while rents for two and three beds are increasing. And these listings were up approximately 5% in February from January. Now, the current metro area population of Denver in 2024 is just over 2.9 million, 1% increase from 23, and it's been increasing about 1.2% per year since 2021. We've grown steadily in the past 10 years, and by 2030, our population is anticipated to increase to more than 3.6 million. We are the second most highly educated state and have a median age of 37.2 years. And those younger workers need housing. I find some of them like to rent for a year or two while trying to decide if Denver is their ultimate destination, but some wanna jump in with both feet and are looking for more permanent housing right away. Now, as a property owner and landlord, this presents you with a very attractive option, whether you continue to rent your home or if you decide it's time to hang up your landlord hat and sell the property. Now, if you'd like to talk through the viability of your rental portfolio, I'm very happy to discuss that with you. So enjoy looking through the data, and I've included the overall market update here as well. The Denver resale market is holding very steady and seeing a boom in some areas of town that are a little bit surprising. I'm always happy to answer any questions you may have on your specific property and your neighborhood.
Thanks so much for watching.